So it's quite a ways before sunrise, and I came over here to the area where I was yesterday. And I'm just gonna keep spending a little more time cast scouting around and seeing what else I could find over here. I did find a really cool looking tree yesterday, and uh, it was after I finished filming video for the day. And it'd be a pretty easy shot, it's kind of more of a late afternoon sort of shot. So I hope to return to that today and get a photo of that. So it's nice to have, at least have a little bit of a plan as far as what I want to do. But I got a long time between now and then, so in the meantime, I'm going to spend a lot of time scouting around and further getting a feeling for the progression of fall color, but I'm looking forward to it. So I thought I was going to be able to shoot a photo there, but man, the light was changing way too fast. So I was scouting around in the wash. I found a kind of a cool scene. So you got this really cool tree root here from this really, really big pine tree you see there and uh, kind of leads down towards the wash. The wash is really clean, got some really nice maples over there. So it's really nice, clean scene. And so I set up a vertical composition, kind of showing the roots here in the foreground, the trees in the background, the wash kind of in the middle. Got everything all focused, everything ready to go. And then some direct sunlight spilled into the scene. So the light changes pretty fast here. And uh, even though I'm not able to shoot it right now, I'll wait until maybe, uh, Maybe the afternoon. Um, also could be tomorrow morning. Um, afternoon light might be pretty good too because in the afternoon, sunlight's gonna be hitting all of this over here. And at some point, um, the trees back over here are gonna fall in the shade. So kind of a bit of a thrill, kind of a rush to try to get things set up. And at least I know there's a composition here. But now I'm gonna pack my camera up I'm gonna see what else I could find because now I have two shots in this general area that should look good in the afternoon. Uh, and got a lot of time to kill before now and then, so keep wandering around and see what else I could find. Even though I'm a little bummed that I wasn't able to get the photo this morning, at least I now know where that area is and uh, I'll try it again in the afternoon and uh, see if I can find uh, some good light there then. But otherwise tomorrow morning will probably be pretty good. But also maybe taking that moment to set up that shot and sort of study the composition means it'll put me on a timetable to find some other cool scene elsewhere in the park. So it's gonna keep exploring the washes here and see if anything else catches my eye. consecutive years I've been coming to Zion to shoot fall color. This is the first time I've been up this particular little side canyon. Just goes to show that even if you visit a place a lot, there's still so much more to explore. And that is one of the reasons why I keep coming back again and again. and set up my camera because I found kind of a interesting scene. So it's this sort of natural tree bridge back over my shoulder here. And I think it's a, uh, I think it's a box elder tree if I know my trees right, which I really don't. But there's also a pine tree there and uh, kind of fell across the wash, but they're both still alive. And so there's a really good display of color. It's a little bit of a kind of a slightly ominous feel to it because the wash is pretty harsh with these big, you know, white rugged rocks. And then you have the scoured walls of the uh, sandstone wash there. 
Um, so it's interesting. I'm not quite sure what the vibe will be of the photo by the time I uh, you know, see the film itself, but the light on the foreground is pretty good. I do wish that there was a little bit more light kind of in the background in the wash, but I'm hoping that the light colored rocks will kind of lead the eye through the frame. I'm trying to find a composition where the tree isn't just kind of like crossing across it, where it like uh, wants to kind of flow a little bit more. So it has a slightly diagonal vibe to it with my camera placement. Um, and also I'm chopping off a little bit of the top of the trees uh, just because that gives sort of a more of a tunnel-y kind of effect and also gives a perception that they just kind of keep going and going. But kind of an interesting find and uh, look forward to seeing how this one turns out. Um, I'd say it falls in the category of slightly experimental, but I did use my uh, 240 millimeter lens, so it's a really tiny little lens, F9 lens. Um, but I originally tried my 300, which is a normal lens, but um, I need something just a little bit wider. So I use my backpacking lens. But pretty cool to find this, pretty cool to expose some film. And uh, it's gonna keep wandering up the wash here and see if anything else catches my eye. So it is now the early afternoon, and I've just spent a lot of time just kind of wandering all around today and just kind of looking for interesting things to point the camera at, but now I've returned to the location where I was this morning. So it's a scene you'll see back over my shoulder there where the big pine tree has its roots growing down into the wash. And it's kind of a tricky composition. Uh, I think I came up with something that'll work, but um, just trying to use those roots as kind of a nice leading line. But then you have all these nice trees you see back behind me in the background and also the really light colored uh, rocks in the wash as well as the sand and all that. So uh, we'll see how it works. I ended up going with a horizontal composition. The one I found this morning was vertical, but horizontal is a little bit easy. I mean, a little bit, easy, a little bit easier as far as depth of field. Um, so hopefully that'll work out pretty well. But it's got to wait uh, a little bit longer here for the sun to move and the shadow to kind of take over the scene because I'm going to shoot this when it is in complete shadow. Uh, that way you get this nice reflected light. All right, let's go buzz our friend. Well, not buzz. I'm still at 12,000, 11,900 feet. That might be Alan Brock flying over right now. But I bet my buddy Ben Horn is up here on the east side. So let's just... Would not be surprised if it's Alan Brock. Let's see what he, if he's down there. Everybody look close. Just ruining my audio right now. Thanks, Alan. So it's been a few more hours now and the sun is kind of moving a little bit. The foreground's in shade now, but it's gonna be in a sun again here pretty soon. And so I'm gonna wait on that one a little while longer. But in the meantime, taking advantage of the reflected light, I got my Intrepid camera here put a normal lens on it and I'm shooting a photo of the scene back over here. I really like the color here and the foreground wash but they don't really interact really well together. It's just kind of like a band of color and a band of a kind of the, like the light colored rocks. I did find that there's an angle where there's this kind of stump that shows up that might kind of time together give it some sort of a focal point but it also might look bad so I guess we'll find out on that. But also in the meantime when I was sitting here waiting this guy shows up and he's wearing a blue shirt, which I think is a threat. And first he starts by ruining my audio and now he's uh, in the background of my shot here. So, yeah. Are we sure I'm not making them look better? So I'm sure many of you guys know Alan Brock. He flew himself out here today and uh, just kind of stumbled upon him here in the wash. And I should probably explain why the blue shirt is a threat because there's gonna be a push-up contest and I don't I don't know why um, I can do a few push-ups but somehow I challenge this guy to a push-up contest and I don't even know if there's a prize other than just lack of humiliation prize humiliation that's a word right sure okay we'll go with that well you know what they say when the blue shirt is worn down goes Ben Horn I have heard that 
Well, it took quite a while, but the sun finally did kind of move out of the way, so I don't have to worry about it flaring up my camera lens. And I was able to make two exposures on Velvia 50, then a single exposure on Ektar 100. And uh, you can see my camera is up there in the shade. And uh, as far as the composition, it's a little bit tricky just because you got this really cool root right here, but also want it to be somewhat diagonal. And so I positioned the camera by kind of moving through the scene until I found just the right area where it looked pretty good, looked pretty natural. And then once I'm under the dark cloth, then I kind of work the edges of the composition. And I'm not quite sure what to think, um, just because I'm looking at it upside down and the wide angles is kind of hard to see everything, but sometimes the experimental, experimental shots kind of turn out pretty good. So we'll see how that works out. And then uh, Alan Brock took a few photos and then uh, ventured further down the wash. And if you guys aren't already subscribed to Alan's channel, you can check out the link right there. Uh, he's got some pretty cool stuff. It'll be interesting to see his take on the trip design this year. And we've got some pretty cool stuff planned as well over the next week or so. But now it's time to get things packed up and then uh, get back to camp, get myself some dinner. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to unload some film, but uh, yep, that's all part of the fun. Of the three photos I shot on day two, I'm not really satisfied with any of them, but I'm okay with that. My goal for each trip is to shoot at least one photo per day. And I knew these photos were a bit on the experimental side. The first photo, it's way too blue, which is something that Velvia has a tendency to do when shot in the shade. I can reduce the blue in Photoshop as you see here, but scenes like this do much better when shot on color negative film, like Kodak Ektar. But setting that aside, something very important is missing from this photo good light, and that's what landscape photography is all about. Despite the hint of warm light hitting the tree, the rest of the scene is very flat and the resulting photo lacks depth. From a purely technical standpoint, this second photo turned out just fine. It shows the leaves at peak color set against some really nice stones in the wash, but something is missing. To me, this is a photo that lacks a sense of story. It's just a picture of pretty colors. Maybe this is one of those photos where my perception will change with time, but I think this also shows how shooting at peak color can actually be quite difficult. Some of my best photos through the years have been when the leaves were thin, revealing the form of the branches beneath. The final photo was the strongest of the three, but it's still not as good as some of the other photos I took on this trip. And to be honest, my exposure was a bit bright on the rocks, and there's some distracting wind movement in the red maples. I thought I had exposed a shoot of Ektar on this scene, but when I got my film back from the lab, it wasn't there. I later found out what happened, but that, my friends, is a story for another day. If you enjoy this ad-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.